got a Honda Ridgeline with the 3.5 liter engine here. And something I noticed is this fan is not turning on. See, I got air conditioning on full blast right now to the max cold. Um, radiator fan is turning on, but this one by the AC compressor for the, for the AC condenser is not turning on. So I've already troubleshot this and I concluded that the, the fan motor is shot. I got a replacement one here already, but I'm gonna show you guys um, the stuff, troubleshooting steps I took to determine that the fan motor was faulty. Well, the first thing I did was to make sure that I have uh, voltage right, right at the connector. So I tested for voltage past the connector because if I get voltage here, then that rules out a bad connection at the connector, everything upstream. I can rule that out also, no bad fuses, no bad relays. As you can see here, every time uh, the radiator fan kicks on, it's also sending voltage over to the condenser fan. Right now I have battery voltage, which that fan should be turning on. Again, that one's turning on. I got battery voltage, but yet the fan is not turning. So that right there verifies that fuses are not blown, uh, relays aren't bad, and the connection point here is good. So now I have a, you know, a headlight bulb here to test the load, make sure that this uh, circuit is capable of um, delivering current. This is kind of redundant, but it's just another way to test it. So we'll go ahead and we'll stick the side here, hit the other side here, just like that, and there you go. 12 volts, the headlight is on, the fan should be turning right now, but yet the fan is not turning. Off. Now the engine control module rounds out that relay. 12 volts is, a, is being sent to the circuit. So that right there verifies that there is current traveling through this circuit to the fan motor. After this test, if um, the motor was not deemed to be faulty and I did not see 12 volts here, um, after, if you would use these kind of puncture probes, make sure that you fill the holes back in with um, liquid tape if you're planning to keep the motor. Since we have 12 volts here, there's no need to look anywhere upstream. If I didn't see 12 volts here, I would start looking upstream towards fuses, um, the fan relays, and make sure that the engine control module is controlling that relay on. But as of right now, everything uh, is, is good on the electrical side. And what I'm gonna do next is pull this uh, old um, motor assembly unit out. So I'm gonna ohm out the motor so I can show you guys why the motor had failed. All right, so now I got the old unit out and here's the new replacement unit. So what I'm doing here is checking the resistance reading to this uh, fan motor. And right now I have an OL, which means over limit, open loop. So there's an open inside of the motor winding coils. So that's how the motor failed. It had failed internally Normally on a good motor, you would see a low resistance reading. And here you have no resistance reading. This motor is shot. And I just have a white lead and a red lead connected to the pins going to the motor and then hooked up to my meter here so I can check resistance. So now I'm gonna do the same on this new one. And if this new one is not bad out of the box, I should have a low resistance reading. And here you go guys, I got the leads hooked up to the new blower um, fan motor and I have a low resistance reading of 1.6 ohms. So if 12 volts is applied to this motor right now, it will rotate. All right, I got the new fan installed. I'm gonna blast air conditioner to max and I'm gonna go watch that fan, see if it's turning on.
Right away she's running, guys. Radiator fans turning and my AC compressor um, condenser, I mean, the condenser fan is also now spinning. 